with Wisconsin Oshkosh taking on St. Thomas in semifinal action. The Division III NCAA playoffs, they produce some great games. We're now down to the semis. The winner of our game will take on the winner of perennial powerhouse Mount Union, taking on Mary Harden Baylor. And that championship game will be at Stag Field in Salem, Virginia. And hi, everybody. Peter Young along with Corey Chavis. Corey, what a great story. Both of these teams undefeated, 13-0. They've never made the championship game, and here they are facing each other in the semis. I think it's two different stories, Peter, because when you look at St. Thomas, it's more of the continuation, I believe, of, of what they've done in terms of getting better as a program under Caruso. On the other side, Wisconsin Oshkosh doing things they've never done before in program history. All right, let's talk about the key matchup. St. Thomas's defense is very blue-collar. Wisconsin Oshkosh is offense. It's dynamic. It's fast-paced. They'll do a little bit of everything, and their star quarterback, Nate Wera, has got to have a great game. Now he has to, but he's been playing very poised all year, and I think when you think about what he can do within their wing T, within their spread triple option, and then also just throwing the football consistently, kind of offset on the other side by St. Thomas's Chenny OG, who coaches, and, and I agree with, is the Division Three Minnesota Vikings' version of Antoine Winfield. And today, he'll need that energy and presence for this defense against Wera. One team will make their first trip ever to the national championship game. The other will head home for a long winter. Kickoff, coming up. Back at O'Shaughnessy Stadium in St. Paul, Minnesota for our semifinal game, Wisconsin Oshkosh and St. Thomas. It's crisp, but hey, this is Minnesota. These fans are ready. Pat Serino in his sixth season at Oshkosh. He's won his last 15 games. That is the longest streak in NCAA right now. And again, this is uncharted territory for their team. For Coach Glenn Caruso in his fifth season at St. Thomas, a phenomenal record, 57-7. and seven. They have been to the semifinals before. They lost last year. They're trying to make the trip to Virginia. St. Thomas, Corey, they won the toss but deferred. So the Titans of Wisconsin Oshkosh will get the ball first. And that could be key for the Titans because they have had three horrible starts to their playoff games. They have been down in every game and had to come back. Today's yeah. weather, yep, sorry, Corey, 34 degrees, partly cloudy. We had some snow last night, but the field is in great shape. Wisconsin Oshkosh with the white tops and St. Thomas with the purple tops. Paul Gropner set to kick off for St. Thomas, freshman out of Minnetonka, and back to receive for Oshkosh, Tim Filter and Zach Kushibuski, and we are underway here in St. Paul. Fielded just inside the 10 and taken out along the sideline. Nice return for Wisconsin Oshkosh. Tackled just inside the 35-yard line. Nate Wera, the star for the Titans, has had a phenomenal senior season. 13-0. His family, they've got a long history with this school, 24 touchdowns and only four interceptions, completing 66% of his passes. And Corey, he's kind of a little bit like the LA Lakers, Steve Nash. It's high powered, it's fast, dynamic, and they are tossing the ball all over the place. First toss, and this is what I mean, and it's a fumble right on the first play for scrimmage. And St. Thomas picks it up and there in the end zone, touchdown. What a start! Ayo Oduo from Nigeria with the fumble recovery for the score. So now for the fourth straight game, Wisconsin Oshkosh is going to have to come from behind. Gropner on for the extra point. And it's good. 14 seconds into this one, and we have a score. 7-0, St. Thomas. Well, I mean, you think you see right now they're trying to hit the edge of the perimeter. It really was just a bad pitch that time by Nate Ware. And unfortunately for them, uh, Johnny on the spot, Idowu, 
able to have the really the recognition after they split that gap and, and you have to give this defense credit to come out with this type of energy ryan deeks look at the corner right there he was forcing it and it was a idobo who makes the outstanding bend to recover the score myra with the fumble and for idobo that is his second fumble recovery for a touchdown in the playoffs versus elmhurst two weeks ago he returned one 86 yards this one shorter but just as big for Coach Serino. But he has seen this now four straight weeks. It's got to be shaking his head, thinking, what do we have to do to get off to a better start? Yeah, yeah you're right. And, and you look at him smiling over there, our crew getting, getting a shot. And, and that smile is kind of a smirk that says, uh, here we go again. But you know, they've been down before, and they know what it takes to come back. And, and that's the positive if you're on that side Weren't we just here a few minutes ago? St. Thomas again to kick off and back to receive Kushibuski and filter. And Kushibuski fumbles the kickoff and he takes a knee in the end zone and it will be a touchback. Perhaps some jitters to start the game for the Titans. Well, Nate Wera now is going to have to lead the Titan offense down a score just underway. And they have had the ball twice and just uh, have not done a good job of holding on to it. Nate Wera, conference player of the year, Cole Myra, school record 19 touchdowns this year. And Taylor Goodman, he's their leading tackler on defense. First and 10 for the Titans to the air. And the catch is made by Kushibuski and a nice first down. It should be a nice gain on first down. Close to the chains. You'll see a lot of that today. Uh, those quick passes to get on the perimeter. You'll see some pitches when he's in the wing position. In fact, he's lined up there right now. Second down and short. No huddle offense. They pitch it to Whipperforth. And he gets to the outside. And we'll have enough for a Titan first down. Corey Whipperforth, the junior from DeForest. 3.88 GPA in finance. And you have to be smart, Corey, to pick up this Titan offense. It is complex. In motion, they hand up on the triple option straight ahead. Stopped immediately by the front seven for the Titans. Excuse me, for Thomas. And you can see already the fast pace. Now they come out and they're in a spread empty formation, or so it looks. Both of those wing backs now coming back into the backfield. Second and eight, reverse. This is Kushibuski. Rara misses the block, and the second big play of this game by Udowo. Yeah, again, you're just going to see him pretty much unblocked on the edge, Idowu, and, and that's an outstanding play. Whenever you can bend at 260 pounds, uh, I, I think that's why the coaches are excited and why he has so many tackles for losses. He leads the team in tackles for losses. Coming into this game, 15 tackles for a loss. The senior from Woodbury, originally from Nigeria, third and 15 for the Titan offense. Fake the hand off the pitch to Whipperforth and gets back to about the original first down marker. And so now it will be fourth and ten. And the punting unit will come on to the Titans. Coach Caruso in his fifth year at St. Thomas is intense. We got to talk to him yesterday, Corey. He is uh, an intense guy from back east. Loves to coach. They come after the punt and they block it at the 25 and down at the 20. Special teams play and a huge one by Ryan Dietz. He's already caused a fumble and now he picks up the block punt. Yeah, they're coming up the middle. And again, you're looking at a number of players getting penetration against that wall back there on the outside. If you take a look, last weekend, they also blocked the punt on the first possession in terms of the punt return. I had a chance to talk to Coach Walsh last night, and they've been working on that punt blocking in practice, and you see it come up right there again. 
Great field position. They're on the 24-yard line. This is Matt O'Connell, the quarterback. He's a sophomore. Hands off to their leading running back. That's number 34, Brenton Braddock, the freshman. Matt O'Connell, the sophomore. He's been very consistent in the playoffs. He's undefeated as a starter. His first five games of the year, Corey, he threw eight interceptions. But in the last seven games, he's only thrown five picks. He's thrown a TD pass in every one of his playoff games. Coach Caruso is very high on this young quarterback. Leading receiver, Ferrazzo in motion. The fake, he goes into the end zone to Ferrazzo. And great defense by the Titans. Got to be real careful throwing the ball over there against Tim Filter, their outstanding cornerback. And right here, he drops back. And last weekend, or even earlier in this season against Wisconsin Platteville, he actually had an interception on the corner round. He has eight of them this year. And anytime you're attacking him, be careful because he's got outstanding ball skills. You see the numbers in the postseason for O'Connell. Tim Filter leads the nation with eight picks. He has shown huge improvement for Coach Serino. Now it's third and long. O'Connell looks to his left, has Ferrazzo, and he is tackled outside of the 10-yard line. Filter is there for the tackle. And so this brings up an interesting call. You've got a fourth down, or no, did he get the first down? He did, so the chains move. Coach Caruso also calls in the offensive plays. So ball on the 12-yard line. 11.55 left here, first quarter. It has been all St. Thomas. They hand off to Braddock. Breaks a tackle of two, but then is stonewalled right at the line of scrimmage, so it'll bring up a second and long. Tackle by Jolin. And that was a good play by Nick Jolin, who got inside right there, number 52. And what, one of the things you'll see in their 22 personnel packages, that's two running backs, two tight ends and one wide receiver is the power game and when they have that Jason Flesher number 66 their right guard will pull second and 11 for the Tommies O'Connell will keep it and gets to the outside and is inside the 10 goes out of bounds at the six yard line another third and short they can get the first down without getting into the end zone you see the red zone numbers for St. Thomas, 77% of the time. They're successful, 47 touchdowns and six field goals. Very important for Andrew Thompson, Peter, and Nathan Smith, Alex Smith. They have to bold their necks right here down in this goal line situation. This is a key point to keep points off the board. Number 86 is Matt Allen. Look for him. He's got a lot of touchdowns in the red zone. Now he's blocking as O'Connell throws back. Touchdown to the other tight end, Logan Marks. Now, once again, they're pretty much just, this is kind of a throwback to the tight end. And it's something that they, they'll do in the open field as well. And again, we talked about those 22 personnel packages. That was the same personnel grouping and ultimately the same red zone result. Seventh touchdown of the season for Marks. 41st catch. And the extra point again is good. 14 to nothing with 10.48 to play here in the first quarter. O'Connell to his big tight end, Marks. St. Thomas, a big. Plenty to cheer about for the St. Thomas fans here in St. Paul. They're up 14 to nothing. It has been a dominating few minutes, and we still have 10.48 to play in the first quarter at O'Shaughnessy Stadium. It seats just over 5,000, but in their rivalry game against St. John's last year, Corey, this is an interesting stat. They had over 10,000 fans crammed in here. It's a great atmosphere for college football. It is, and, and, and our crew down there in the truck and our camera guys, they're giving us a chance. Feel like feels like we're in the crowd a little bit uh, when you see some of those low angles. Uh, amazing the energy in here this afternoon. Grobner to kick off for the third time in the first quarter. And again, Kushabuski back to receive for the Titans. Standing on about the 
five-yard line. He'll have a chance to make something happen here. Received it about the six, out to the 20, and is hit hard at the 25. Well, this score right now is nothing new for the Titans. So far in their playoff games, first round, they were down 10-0, rattled 55 straight for the win, and then 14-0 in the second round, 14-0 in the quarterfinal round, and now today they're down 14-0, but look at that in the second half. They have come back 76-3. They're outscoring their opponents in the second half. We've still got a quarter to go here. First and 10 on the 25. Guerra, quick pass to his favorite target. That is Caleb Voss, number 87. Six 100-yard receiving games this year. He has the school record for yards on a season. Just over 1,200 yards. Second is short, and again, the ball is bobbled. That is Kushavuski. That is the second time Corey, we have seen on a little toss that the running back is having a hard time holding on to the ball. Well, you can't discount the fact that it's, what, 28, 29 degrees or whatever it was before. We got the graphic that, that we put up before the game, but that could play a factor. Third and short. Whipper first in motion. He gets the toss. And St. Thomas defense does a great job of stringing it to the outside. Sean Hamlin, number 24, the sophomore quarterback, comes up with the stop. His confidence has been lagging in the playoffs. We talked to Wally Kaczynski, the defensive coordinator for St. Thomas. He said that, that you know, Hamlin's kind of struggling a bit with his confidence, but that helps. And now he is back to receive the punt. Yeah, and he actually had a muffed punt last week, so let's keep our eye on that. Came back strong. Again, St. Thomas goes after it. They don't get the punt this time. Hamlin receives it just outside the 20 and is tackled quickly at the 25. 9.42 left in the first quarter, and it has been all Tommies, 14 to nothing. Here at O'Shaughnessy Stadium, they are loving this first quarter, 14 to nothing with 9.42 left. Early on in this one, the defense comes up big. The fumble, and then the fumble return by Adowu, and then the blocked punt. Special teams comes up big. Kyle Coyne with the block. And then on the offense, O'Connell to his tight end, Marks. Three big plays, and they've got a 14-0 lead, and they've got the ball first and 10 on the 25. O'Connell hands off to Braddock. And Braddock gets a few yards on first down. Impact players for the Tommies. Well, they've had quite a bit of impact. O'Connell's already got a touchdown pass in the first quarter. 22 now on the season. Curtis James, he's a consensus All-American center, moved from tackle. And Riley Dombeck, their defensive lineman, two-time first-team All-Conference. He is their best defensive lineman for St. Thomas. Second and six on about the 29-yard line. Braddock with the pitch and a huge gain on second down and that will be enough for a first down. In on the tackle for the Titans, number nine, that is Andrew Thompson, 47 tackles, six sacks on the season for the senior. And if it wasn't for Thompson's game-winning fumble recovery last week in, in overtime, Maybe they're still playing <laughs> because that game seemed like it would never end. But, you know, he was Johnny on the spot. He's an outstanding football player. Look for, it. Look for you to call his name a lot today. The Smith twins up front for Wisconsin Oshkosh. Number 90, Nathan Smith, and his twin, Alex Smith, number 91. First and 10. O'Connell's going to keep it on the ground. Gets to the outside. Nice block. It's taken down at about the 40-yard line by the Titans. Again, Thompson, Thompson with the tackle. Rushing numbers for O'Connell on the season, averaging almost six yards a carry, 736 yards and three TDs. Another smart kid, he's got a 3.85 great point average, comes from a tiny town, Clear Lake, Wisconsin. Just over a thousand people. He's a valedictorian, right? 
Valedictorian in high school, had ridiculous high school numbers. We'll get to those a little bit later. Second and six, play clock down to five. Again, O'Connor with the pump fake to set up a nice screen pass, and the pass is complete to the tight end Marks. Should have another Tommy's first down. Bo Steffens for the Titans in on the tackle, the sophomore. And what they try to get them to do right here is going a little bit of a pump fake, and it's pretty much a middle tight end screen where the wide delays and the wide being the tight end him with his hand in the ground right there. Uh, not a lot, but effective enough. Logan Marks, now you have to revise those numbers a bit because he's already caught two passes today. He's got another touchdown, so he's got seven on the season. He has made his presence known. The Tommy's almost to midfield, first and ten. O'Connell drops back to pass, pressured, pressured by Smith, and he throws on the run and smartly throws it away. The road to the semis for St. Thomas. They defeated St. Norbert 48-17, Elmhurst 24-17, and then last week against Hobart 47-7. I'm sure Coach Caruso enjoyed that one. Hobart, an East Coast school. And Caruso played center at Ithaca, so that had to feel good for him. Second and ten. Ball still on the 47-yard line. Titans really need to come up with a big stop and avoid going down even further as Braddock with a head of steam keeps his feet and manages after that first contact, Corey, to pick up some more yardage close to a first down. Well, it's our formation. They pretty much just are running a tall sweep to the tight end side again. And give Willie Snyder credit, their fullback, who got out on the edge right there and made a good block. And, and then, you know, I believe Braddock runs bigger than his size at 180 pounds or whatever it is. He's a little stronger than you think. He had a broken leg last year, Braddock, so he redshirted. He missed the first three games of this year with an ankle injury. On third down, St. Thomas, two for two. Third and one. Braddock again, and I don't think he got it. That's a big defensive stop for the Titans. Nathan Smith, number 90 there for the tackle. Eight tackles for a loss on the season. All-conference performer. So fourth and one, is Caruso going to go for it? Looks like he is. On the season, 56% in fourth down conversion for St. Thomas. We talked about yesterday how sometimes you know you're going to go for it when you're on this side of the 50-yard line, and we're seeing it right here. Down the 44, O'Connell will keep it, and O'Connell has the first down. So the chains will move and this drive continues. Well, they're just getting out, really. This is nothing more than a quarterback sweep. And it's his job to find the correct hole. And he does that and sticks his nose up in there. Tough kid. And that's one of the things, one of the reasons why he's had so many yards rushing is because he's also somebody who I believe plays a little bit bigger than his size would indicate as well. Ball on the 42, just over five minutes left, first quarter. The handoff on first down, and he is tackled in the backfield. Tackle made by number 43, Jared Nails, senior from Iron Ridge. And Nails has been getting it done lately. Last weekend, made some key plays coming in the game. They've been rotating them in some. And I think that's what you have to do as the year goes on. Find those players who are improving and get them reps. Number seven, Ferrazzo, split wide to the left right there on your screen. O'Connell with the play action. Rolls out to his left. Now he's going to keep it. Gets beyond the 40, breaks the tackle, and coming up to make the tackle is Nate Filter. Excuse me, Tim Filter. Yeah, you keep a defense off balance. Uh, when you can play action on bootleg to either side. A lot of times you'll see a right-handed quarterback bootleg to his right. Well, that was against his momentum going to his left that time. It still gives this team, the Tommies, a run-pass option even that way. 
and you again saw the athleticism picking up five. Third and six. They've been perfect on third down in this first quarter. Play change by Coach Caruso. Corey will talk about this today. He is big on tempo, changing up the tempo of their offense. O'Connell to keep it to the left side, gets to the outside, and is run out of bounds inside the 35, but that will be short of the first down. So will they go for it on fourth again? Oh, they could. I think one of the things you got to look for right now, uh, a lot of tired bodies potentially uh, on the Wisconsin Oscars defense right now because, let's face it, they've been on the defensive side of the ball most of this first quarter. Their offense simply hasn't had the ball to kind of even out this time of possession. So we've got to pay attention to these fourth down situations because these are normally the downs when you get straight ahead action in terms of the run game. Rotner is the kicker for the Tommies as long as a 42. Now you see the change in tempo for the Tommies. O'Connell rolls out, has a receiver open, and the tight end with another first down. Logan Marks has had a big first quarter. That's his third catch. We just, we just got through talking about the bootleg, and now it comes to the right side. They just did it the other way to the left. And again, that's what keeps you off balance. You see they don't have you know, a quick reaction also to how quickly they line up. You'll see that again from this Tommy's offense as the day goes on. Yeah, Coach Caruso calls that the on the quick. He releases the wide receiver in the center, then everybody else runs up to the line and they snap it right away. Braddock with the carry and a nice tackle by the leading tackler to the Titans, Taylor Goodman. 97 tackles on the year coming into this game. Yeah, what I liked about what the coaches said about him, Saturday afternoon player. Well, they need it right now. Second and long for the Tommies. Braddock with the pitch to the outside. Breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle, and he is inside the 20. That was Nails who was the first to get a hand on him. But Braddock, like you said, Corey, plays bigger than 180. Well, I think when you have contact balance, and, and, and that normally refers to how do you react when players hit you around the ankles or the thighs, anywhere below the waist? You'll see him break a lot of those tackles because of that unique balance. Big number 92, Brandon Jackson. In for the Titans. Third and one, O'Connell thinking about it now he throws and he has the receivers and a touchdown yes touchdown Ferrazzo <laughs> 16 yard touchdown to Dan Ferrazzo now is his knee down well if we're gonna make a bet me and you, we have a chance, a dollar bet between me and you. We had a couple of these last weekend. I'd say yes, when they go to the replay, one yard line, they'll respot it. Replay booth is going to look at this one. So we are under official review. And as Austin Blaschka, number three with the tackle. What do you think? Well, I think they bring it right there to the one inch yard line because his knee was down and I don't think it had crossed the plane yet. You see right. Well, wait a minute. Let me take a look at this again. Great job. Our guys down in the truck again. And I think the one thing you'll see right here. Let's see when that knee actually hits the ground because it looks like it hits the ground at first. But pretty good balance that time by Ferrazzo keeping it off there. And we'll see how it looks on the second look. Ferrazzo had six catches for 103 yards last week. If this stands, that'll be his fifth touchdown of the season. Going back to tempo and Coach Caruso, he's really big psychology, sports psychology. On the other side of the ball, Coach Cerrone, he's big on leadership. And so what he's after with the tempo change, Coach Caruso, is trying to create anxiety for the defense. I think he's created a lot of anxiety <laughs> right now for Oshkosh. Yeah, I mean, we're up here again around some snow, and we'll talk about skiing because oh. we're in that danger zone right now if you're on the Wisconsin <laughs> Oshkosh side. I guess that's the black zone. That is black. That's right. right yeah. well, but I think the one thing about it, to, to prevent a downhill slope, if you're the Wisconsin Oshkosh defense, you need a goal line stand. And guess what? They had one last weekend. So this is a team. 
to it after this replay. After review, the runner was short of the goal line at the half yard line. The ball will be placed at the half yard line, first and goal, St. Thomas. The clock will start on the ready for play. So no touchdown, but it will be Tommy's ball on the half yard line. There's been a nice long drive for Coach Caruso. 16 plays over seven minutes. They had some dramatic defensive performances last week in their overtime win. They blocked potential game winning field goal. Let's see what Oshkosh can do on this play. And I think we got another touchdown for the Tommies. Yes, quarterback sneak. O'Connell gets in. So the sophomore has thrown for one and ran for one. I think that's Caruso's crew down there getting it hype, man. <laughs> and Caruso's crew, they came to work today. <laughs> They've got the hard hats on. This is definitely a blue collar St. Thomas team. 1.51 to play in the first quarter. 21 to nothing. The fans are loving this year at O'Shaughnessy Stadium. <laughs> Scoring update for you. Mary Hardin Baylor up 21 to 14 over Mount Union at the half. The winner of that game moves on to the championship. The season concludes with the NCAA Division III National Championship live from Salem, Virginia on ESPNU. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. I'll be watching. And, Corey, <laughs> i tell you what, if Wisconsin Oshkosh doesn't get something going pretty soon, St. Thomas is going to be playing in that game. Yeah, they're off to a tremendous start. And, Peter, we'll have to see something from this wing T attack. St. Thomas kicks off again, and Kushabuski is going to let this one bounce through the end zone. Coach Serino, we talked about him with his seniors. Nate Wera is one of the 19 seniors on this Titan football team. Coach Serino's developed this leadership council. So all of those 19 seniors, Corey, they've got to really buy into things. They've got to buy into being a leader. And right now, the seniors have got to come up with something. Yeah, they do. And I think that ultimately, uh, the one thing he talked about uh, was not having, like, fake leaders. And these are the times when the real ones come out. Handoff on first down. And it is Myra. Fourth in Division Three with 1,571 rushing yards on the season. You saw the numbers for Nate Wera. Three for three passing for 15 yards. We should point out in last week's playoff game, he broke his pinky on his right throwing hand. That was the first play of the third quarter. He went eight for eight after that point, and now that's his first incomplete pass since he broke his finger. Dropped by Voss. Yeah, but he did force some of those players in that game to make some tough catches. In fact, the game winner by Voss was a one-hander. So we'll have to watch his accuracy the rest of the game. Great shot by our camera crew. You saw the, the loose little splint there for Wera. Plenty of time, and now the St. Thomas defense finally gets to him. Sack made by Harry Patera, the junior. First team all-conference, Minnesota transfer. Tremaine Williams, number 32, also there. The junior from Appleton, Wisconsin, does it all for Coach Caruso. Both of those players are among their most talented guys. So you're never surprised when you see them get some in the backfield penetration. So fourth and 14, and the Titans will punt back to receive is Hamlin. And he's going to let this one drop, and I think it might have even hit him. But it goes out of bounds, and it will be near midfield. So the first quasi bobble for the Tommies. But boy, there's been some bobbles and miscues in this first quarter for the Titans. 39 seconds left. I'm sure the Titans are just thankful that this quarter is about to run out. All right. But Hamlin has to be careful because that was really a muff uh, because it kind of hit his left ankle. 
and, and he's already had one last week. And they're trying to get some consistency in that special teams unit in the return game, Coach Walsh is. First and 10. Ball on the 43 for the Tommies. O'Connell bobbled. He will run for it off the left side. It gets past the 45, taken down at about the 47-yard line. The numbers for O'Connell this year, first in the conference in yards, yards per game, he has second, third in touchdowns, and his completion percentage, 58.4. And those numbers, Corey, really improved as the season went along and as he gained confidence. Yeah, I think again that, that uh, we're, we're definitely spotlighting some of the, the positives anytime a leader gets his team this far and, and, and the type of athlete that he is. But you know, he, he needs a little bit more consistency to me in, in terms of accuracy at specific points. 21 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. It was a forgettable quarter for the Titans. Back at O'Shaughnessy Stadium, and the cheerleaders trying to stay warm on this brisk, frigid day, just over 34 degrees. First quarter numbers, well, it was all St. Thomas. There you see the turnovers, the points off of turnovers, and the rushing yards, minus eight for Oshkosh. And that's probably the most surprising number that we've seen, too, uh, with, with the potency uh, of their rushing attack. Second and five for the Tommies. O'Connell will keep it. Gets taken down just at midfield. Nick Jolin again there for the stop. And Corey, turnovers being the story and special teams playing the first quarter. For St. Thomas, their turnover margin of the year was, was zero. But for Wisconsin Oshkosh, they were plus 18 on the year. It's a surprise to see the ball handling mistakes. That's what it, really what it's come down to. Even we had a mishandle on a kickoff return, if you remember that, uh, by Kushabeski earlier in the game. So those things have been surprising to us. Inside Titan territory on the 49, third and two. O'Connell rolls out. He's going to keep it, and he has the first down. Taken down at the 41-yard line. Cody Hummer with the tackle. Sophomore from Sun Prairie. It's something that the St. Thomas coaches must have seen during the week that made them believe they could attack the perimeter of this Wisconsin Oshkosh defense. Chains move again. It's first and ten. Handoff. Right up the middle. Tackled at the 40-yard line. I believe that was Alex Smith inside with his with his brother Nathan. And, and they're pretty stout inside. When they pinch down over those B-gaps, over the guards, uh, along with Thompson, I think they do a good job of stopping the inside run. Right now, their outside linebackers have to get a little bit more discipline in terms of the contained presence against this bootleg game by the Thompsons. Jack Kaiser with the carry. Braddock getting a breather. Kaiser... Was not getting a lot of carries at the start of the season. Then in October, had back-to-back -back games where he had 100 yards. So it's second and seven. Play action, O'Connell looking deep and goes to his tight end, and it is tipped. Intended for Marks. Good defense that time by Goodman. I think O'Connell's been a little bit more accurate today than what I saw on tape. That 58% completion percentage, they do push the ball down the field, but he mi he's missed some open guys, at least in the tape that I've seen, that, that potentially could have made his numbers even bigger coming into this football game. Has the luxury with two big tight ends. Logan Marks is 6'5", 244. Third and long today, four for six on third down conversion. O'Connell, and here comes the pressure, and he is sacked at the 45-yard line. And another big play for the Wisconsin Oshkosh defense, Jared Nails. Well, you basically are just seeing him come. It was somewhat of a, an X stunt where he's coming inside, and he, he timed it up perfectly uh, to make that sack. He's playing very well thus far. 
fourth and 11. They line up to go for it. And O'Connell will punt. So the quick punt rolls, takes a Tommy roll all the way down inside the 10 yard line and finally down at about the eight. All the bounces are going the Tommy's way, but it will be Oshkosh ball when we come back. 12.27 left. 21 nothing, 12.27 to go in the first half. It is Titan football pinned inside their 10 yard line. Nate Ware, conference player of the year. Going to try and come up with a long drive and get some points on the board for Oshkosh before halftime. It's second and seven. Has time to pass and has his receiver, and that is Voss, and Voss has a first down. Tackle by Paul Carson. Well, if you're going to get back in the game, that's the guy that you'll try to find. And right there, they pretty much just ran a spacing concept. He wants to curl and find the voided zone. Very efficient route runner. They'll line him up away from the trips. And right here, you see where are actually Amara, excuse me, in the slot. Don't be surprised if he comes back into the backfield. First and 10 ball on the 23-yard line. Wera to throw. And has a man open a blown coverage. And Whipperford is going to score. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Corey Whipperford. Whipperford. pass complete to Whipperford. Touchdown, Titans. Well, right here, just a situation where Hamlin... It, it, he gives it up to the safety over the top. Tyler Erstead takes a bad angle, pass. and then Whipperford, he's got speed, pass. and he shows it right there. From the Indiana Titans answer with a huge touchdown, 21-6. to six. Third Ladies touchdown reception of the season for Whipperford. Extra point is good, so 21-7. to seven. And plenty of fans have made the drive to Minnesota from Wisconsin and now finally some to cheer about. Well, what happens in these situations, it looks like Hamlin actually saw something, the outbreaking route from the number two receiver, and then Erste gets over the top. And, and again, he just can't find the ball because anytime you're in a position where the corner gives that route up so quickly, it puts more pressure on the safety to get over the top just to match it. And that does inevitably doesn't allow that safety to find or keep vision on the ball. And you see that a lot in the NFL and the collegiate ranks so much down the field in those situations. Five of six on the day for Wera, 105 yards and the touchdown. That drive, three plays, 93 yards in less than a minute. So clearly that broken pinky that we talked about, Corey, not bothering him. Well, when you got a receiver averaging 20 yards a catch, just throw it up and see if he can increase the average. Whipperford did right there. Nate Ray to kick off. Received at the four yard line by Ferrazzo. Ferrazzo out past the 25 and is tripped up, taken down at about the 27 yard line. Jake Leiber, number 22, made the stop on special teams. So, how will the young Matt O'Connell respond with this Tommy offense? They still have a two touchdown lead with 11.27 to play in the first half. Well, the one thing you want to do right here, Peter, is just keep the momentum from going or shifting too much by just getting a couple of first downs. Lone backfield, O'Connell in the shotgun. Runs to his right and a quick throw to Ferrazzo along the sidelines as he is knocked out of bounds by Ryan Stefania. Stefania watches a lot of film for the Titans, and he was the one that blocked that fourth quarter field goal against Linfield. Played great in the playoffs. And he should have had two pick sixes last week. That's right, two. Two to the house last week. Maybe they don't go to overtime if he takes them to the house. Second and four, got to get to the 37 yard line for the first down, and a tackle in the backfield. Taylor Goodman. 
Goodman. Goodman, the senior from South Wayne, Wisconsin, spent his freshman year at Whitewater. Wisconsin Whitewater. Yeah, look at those numbers. The coach said they didn't think he was ever going to make it. But not only did he make it, he's now the tailor-made reason for this defense improving so much as the year has gone on. Third and five. Caruso changes the play. Raddick switches sides. Play clock down to six. O'Connell with plenty of time, and he hits his receiver, Ferrazzo, and he is tackled and should have the first down. Stefania with the stop. By the time they have him to the field, and that was a long throw. And anytime you have a long throw right there, you see Smith with the pressure inside. Deliver a blow. And he gets up underneath Ferrazzo, but he's able to hang on. One of the tough players on the St. Thomas football team. You saw one of them right there. First and 10, ball on the 37 for the Tommies. O'Connell, another high snap, and he will run straight into the Oshkosh defense. Ran right into number 90, that is Nathan Smith. The senior, his twin Alex, is actually a junior because he was hurt last year and he had the medical register. And he actually runs into his center. That is 77, Curtis James, the consensus All American, former tackle. Coach Caruso moved him over to the center position. And he's done that a couple times with his tackles throughout his coaching career. Rollout pressure from Stefanik and it's picked off. The interception. That is Frank Mark number 20. And a huge play for the Titans. The senior from Greenleaf, the hard hitter, blew out his ACL last year and he picks off O'Connell. Well, you see him try to get out on the edge. Stefaniak, the guy you've been talking about, active once again. And then there's Martin. You talked about him blowing out the ACL. Well, right here, he blew up that attack because what he'll do is he'll clue in quarters coverage. And what I mean by that, he'll read the quarterback and walk pedal and then get a good break. Big reason why he came into the game with four interceptions. That's actually his fourth interception of the year and so the first turnover for Oshkosh gives them great field position they're on the 41 yard line Rara drops back has time in the pocket collapses and the ball goes right to Idowu and Idowu has it no that's number 97 Dombeck with the ball they give it right back to the Tommies See him in the pocket right there. And then there's our guy again, Idowu, who's really had a big game so far. And, and you've seen the activities coming off the edge right there. And bam, you see the activity when you look at him actually use a bull rush that time to get some separation. Then he filters back inside. And then Dombek, Johnny on the spot, picking up that ball. Idowu with the hit, knocked the ball loose. Dombek picks it up. That may have actually been... I don't know if that was a fumble or an interception, but either way, it is St. Thomas football. So after two huge momentum plays for Oshkosh, the long touchdown pass and the turnover, they give it right back. 21 to seven, our score. Big defensive play by the Tommies. Back 21 to 7, our score, 851 left in the first half. This is a Division III semifinal game. For St. Thomas, they've made all the big plays. First play from scrimmage, the fumble. Idowu takes it back for the touchdown, 7-0. And then special teams. Kyle Coyne with the blocked punt. Set up another St. Thomas score. And then just moments ago, Idowu gets the hit. And then Dombek with great hands with the pick. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when I first saw the recovery, they're going to give Dominic some credit for having some basketball hand out. They call it a pick, so if he dropped that, it would not have been a fumble. And O'Connell goes down. The defense for the Titans has come alive as O'Connell is sacked in the backfield. 
Yeah, well, that's my man. I talked about him earlier in the game, Andrew Thompson. I just was so impressed watching him on film. And that time, you saw the energy off the edge because normally he'll line over the tackle. That time, he got in a wider stance and just beat him with speed. Seventh sack of the season for Thompson. So it's second down and 18 for the Tommy offense. Two difficult plays in a row for O'Connell, the pick and then the sack and the pitch to Braddock and Braddock is strung outside and beats Jolin to the outside and his run out of bounds. It'll bring up a third and long. Three turnovers combined in the first half and only St. Thomas has been able to capitalize with that early score. But I do think the Wisconsin Oshkosh defense has settled down some. And you're starting to see them do a much better job of really being where they're supposed to be. Third and 13. Ball right on the 35 yard line. Here comes the pressure from the Smith brothers. And another interception in his tip. And it is picked off by Wisconsin Oshkosh. The second interception today. Zach Wettengill with the pick from Appleton, the senior. And so, Corey, the seniors for the Titans keeping them in the game. Well, they only bring in three, but right there you see Smith off the edge. And then really that was Tim Filter, uh, the ball hawk, who really caused that interception for Wettengill. Look at him read the quarterback. You see Thompson inside again with pressure. Just a drop pick by Filter, and he goes right into the hands of Wettengill, who makes the outstanding play. And I think the one thing that you're seeing is they're doing a much better job of being deep when they're supposed to be deep. First and 10 for the Titans. Yeah, Tim Filter's tiny. 5'9", 180. He's a lot like Chini Oji. Built the same way. The little shovel pass. Hot potato toss to Myra. And Myra is strung out to the outside. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Good defense by Carlson. Yeah, we talked to defensive coordinator, uh, Kajet, really their, 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 their entire defensive staff, uh, but mostly Wally Kajinski, knowing his linebackers would have to make plays laterally today. Second and nine. They fake the handoff, and Wera runs straight ahead into his offensive line, and they push the pile forward almost out to the 35. Good effort by both of these teams. Yeah, this turned into a good football game. Yeah. And where a Corey, last week when he broke his pinky finger, it wasn't on a follow through of a pass where he hit a helmet. It was on a run. Third and one. They asked a lot of him, Peter, in that one game. Oshkosh trying to capitalize on the turnover. Six and a half left, first half. Myra in motion. Where is going to run with it, and he has the first down out to about the 40-yard line. Brought down by Mike Velasano, the senior from Brainerd. Coach Caruso calls in the heart of the defense, fifth-year senior. Well, you got John Kreshek in the game at that superback position along with Matt Blackwell, and that motion by Wera is more of just window dressing. First and ten for the Titans. Where a rolls to his left and a dangerous pass intended for Voss. Great defense by Dietz. Dietz has had a phenomenal first half. Yeah, the senior really has. You watch him right there. You also see Adobo almost get his hands up. But look at him get his hand in between Voss. And Voss has size. And Dietz showing that really he can compete and climb the ladder. Well, with all of the Harlem Globetrotter-esque things that the Titans do with the ball, they really have done a nice job, especially where up, not turning it over. Earlier this year, he had 192 straight passes without a pick. Now they flow in, throw into the flat to the running back, Myra, and he is knocked out of bounds by Patera. Third and five under six to play. I think that's the, the thing about Myra is that he's an effective player catching the football out of the backfield. He can do so many different things for you. You have to locate him on the football field if you're a defender for the Tommies. 
Tommy's show pressure. Where a quick throw over the middle. Catch is made. And they are inside Tommy territory. Kashevsky with the catch. Well, really, you're saying there's no problems with the pinky now. And he's really just getting it done in between the hash marks on the edges. He's showing a full plethora of his passing ability today, even with that injury. That shot looked like he's got those two fingers taped together. I asked him if that's what he was going to do yesterday, and he said no, but it looks like they have taped him together. On first and ten, here comes the pressure. He avoids it somehow, and now he is taken down from behind, but not after a short game. Tremaine Williams, the linebacker, with the tackle. Yeah, you see right there the good footwork right here. Uh, actually getting a pretty good job by Meyer trying to help him out. Uh, but that avoids really a negative play. And those are the positives that he brings to the table as a senior. Second and seven. Look at the rushing yards for their offense. Eight. That's it. Pass to Myra. And Myra is taken down. So that really is going to count as another rush. The throw from behind the line of scrimmage. Nice tackle made. That was Tyler Erstead, and you know, he makes those little plays. You know, he's one of those players that you know, he's not as flashy as some of the other defenders. We talked about Chitty Oji. Haven't heard his name much today thus far, but Erstead is one of the rocks as another senior in that defensive backfield. And Chitty Oji, number two, five foot eight, and small guy, great quickness. You keep your eye on him. They really haven't thrown to his territory much, and where it would go down. Guerra sacked by Patero. So a big third and eight stop for the Tommy defense. Now it sets up fourth and ten. So will Coach Cerrone go for it here? I think you are in four down territory. You look at the time. You've got under four to play. Don't be surprised. And down two scores. Don't be surprised if he pooch punts this as well. He can pooch punt as well. So don't be surprised if you see him do that. I've seen it on film, and it looks like the Tommies are prepared for it. Yeah, good call. And so Wera with the nice punt. And OG fakes the fair catch, and it's going to take a friendly Titan roll inside the 10. 3.29 left in the first half, and that was a big stop for the St. Thomas defense, and it will be their ball when we come back to St. Paul. So crew loves it here. It's been a great first half for St. Thomas. They're up 21 to 7, three and a half left. ESPN College Football is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at WatchESPN.com and with the Watch ESPN app. Update for you on the brackets in Division III. 27-14, Mary Harden Baylor up on Mount Union. And the winner of this one will face the winner of that game in the Stag Bowl. And you take a look at the past champions. The last seven years have been dominated by Wisconsin Whitewater and Mount Union. So how about if we get Mary Harden Baylor in there? We could have two new teams in the Stag Bowl. First down and an impressive run for the Tommies. Taken down at about the 16-yard line. Braddock's had a nice first half for St. Thomas. When you talk about Mount Union, they have been in the Division Three championship game 11 out of the last 12 years. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And they, this year they have 98 touchdowns offensively. They've only given up 12 defensively. That's the reason they've had such great tradition. Second and four. Hand off to Kaiser. And Kaiser with some nimble footwork. And he gets beyond the 20 and is taken down by Goodman, who remains down on the ground. But that'll be enough for a St. Thomas first down. Remember, neither one of these teams has ever been to the championship game. Yeah, it's Taylor Goodman down on the ground. Let's see how he got hurt. Well, he's coming right down there, running the toss, and they're pulling Flesher again. He tries to go underneath Flesher's block, and that was back earlier in that down. And I don't know if his leg may have gotten caught up Anytime you won those tosses or the power perimeter plays, 
But one thing that the Tommies like to do is pull Jason Fletcher. And he tried to read it a little bit earlier. And as a linebacker, you have to read the guard pull. And that's the number one thing you're taught because all of a sudden the gaps on the other side of the line of scrimmage, they've added an extra blocker. And unfortunately that time, he got tripped up. First and 10 for St. Thomas. They spotted at the 21 yard line. Under three left in the first half. The pitch, and again Kaiser with an impressive run and nearly 10 yards taken down outside the 30-yard line. Andrew Thompson, number nine, there for the stop. Both of these backs have good vision. Now that time again, you saw a toss action, but it was more of an inside toss. And his job was to cut back off the block of the guard to center. Good job by these backs so far reading their blocks. Second and one at the 30. O'Connell play action. Nice pocket, but it collapses on him, and he is sacked again. Taken down by Goodman, so he recovered quickly. <laughs> yeah, he recovered quickly, and right now he, he got really um, matched up with Jason Fletcher, and it was really the, the initial hit by Nathan Smith which allowed him to come in after he had beaten the block of flesh. Uh, so these guys are continuing on the defensive side of the ball to compete to the end of the first half. Pivotal third down for both teams, third and four, 125 left. Play clock down to seven. O'Connell pressured by Thompson. Throw is complete. And Kaiser with the catch should have a St. Thomas first down. Kaiser's played a nice second quarter. He's a dependable football player. You mentioned the statistics earlier. When he comes in the game, they really don't miss a beat. They can still do their perimeter run game and, and everything else. But uh, you see them playing cover two right here. They're trying to cup the football. And let's see where he comes down at. I think it's a first down. Hit was made by number 29, Bo Steffens, the sophomore from Waterford. Well, you look at Kaiser as a freshman, Braddock as a freshman, O'Connell, quarterback as a sophomore. So many of these underclassmen are getting so much playing time because Coach Caruso's team has had so many injuries. The top three wide receivers are out for the year. Yeah, you bring up a good point. Uh, anytime you lose Dan Noring, who, who was actually, at the time of his injury, averaging 18.9 yards a catch with four scores. So how do you end up losing a guy like that and replacing him? Well, other guys step up. You've seen a number of players, uh, but one guy we haven't seen so far today, Mishavitz, Matt Mishavitz, number 87. We've already seen Dan Ferrazzo, uh, but you're right. Uh, you got to come back after the injuries. So not a first down. It is fourth and one. And on the 31-yard line. So the Tommies are going to punt away. And the Titans are going to have about a minute left to try and get something done here. And it is a short punt. And it is a fair catch at about the 41 by Tim Filter. Trying to win a title in football. They're up 21 to seven, 57 seconds left for Wera and Wisconsin. And here comes OG, delivers the hit right as Wera throws, and it is low to his receiver, Kushabuski. And the first time we've been able to talk about Chinny OG, and well, mate, he's down. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was saying. And, and the first time you talk about a player and he goes down, usually not a good sign. Well, Nate Wera, the quarterback, 220 pounds, and here's another look at the hit. There's nothing really that we see that happens there, just a flush hit. And really, I thought uh, Kushabuski had a chance to make that catch. Wasn't a bad throw under heat by Wera. But uh, when, when you look at the, the, the type of energy that this kid plays with, and they're talking about OG, uh, pretty remarkable that his body has been able to hold up because as me and you saw on film, he throws it around quite a bit. And that's why when I was talking to some of those coaches on the St. Thomas staff, there were images or at least comparisons being made to Antoine Winfield. 
Well, the story I think is fascinating. That Chini Oji originally from Nigeria, so is Ayo Adowu. And then both of them moved to the Midwest near the St. Paul, Minneapolis metro region. And then they come to St. Thomas and they both play football. And you know, they were born halfway around the globe. They never knew each other until they get on this football team. And it is, it is a fascinating story. And then talking again with some of the coaches, there's a lot more people moving to that northwest region here in Minnesota. So it might be an opportunity to recruit some more Nigerians or, or play, actually players from other countries uh, that can come in and, and maybe get a great education at a school like this because what a great finance and business program they have here. Well, we thought OG was going to be the impact player for the St. Thomas defense, but it has really been Idowu, who had the fumble recovery for the touchdown, and then he laid the hit on Wera that led to the pick for Dombeck. So he has had a very impactful first half. And we should have listened to you because you said yesterday to watch out for this guy. And we went with OG, and now, thankfully for him and his family and for the St. Thomas fans, he's walking off the field under his own power. You see Coach Caruso, who... So much energy, as you talked about earlier, and such a positive attitude as we get a look at him right there. Positive and intense. Again, played center at Ithaca, and he was kind of talking about how he was a, he was a 270. It wasn't a pretty-looking 270. But he must have been working out because he's lost some weight. He has lost quite now. a bit since then. 53 seconds to go in the first half. It's second and 10. We're a back to pass screen set up nicely and should be enough for a first down that will move the chains and it is Cole Myra with the reception such a versatile player and again you saw him make somebody miss in the open field underrated footwork in space clock is stopped as they move the chains 46 seconds left and don't look now Corey but if Wisconsin Oshkosh scores here it's a one touchdown game which would be remarkable given all the things that have gone wrong for them. Where with the strong arm and perhaps some miscommunication as that was nowhere near Caleb Voss. Hamlin there on the coverage. I don't think that hurts you too much there though, Peter, because all of a sudden Voss is out of bounds. You still have 39 seconds to go. Don't forget, you actually do still have one timeout left uh, and the clock will stop upon a first down. Cerrone is also the defensive coordinator for Oshkosh. He's got two offensive coordinators. Another interesting story that we haven't touched on much. Second and ten. Fake the handoff. OG's back in the game. Wera looking downfield. May have been hit as he throws. Intended for Whipper first, but it is incomplete. And that was Chinny OG on the blitz. And Myra had to pick him up. And he did a pretty good job of picking him up. Then he's able to kind of slide in the pocket. Pretty good job by him sliding, Wera. And then that's an opportunity right there for Whipperfirth to make that low sliding grab. And maybe that's a situation where his pinky affected the throw. Yeah, good point, Corey. Was either that or he just didn't have the room to step into that throw. Did not have the zip on. That's two back-to-back -back throws we've seen that have been inaccurate. Third and ten, play clock down to four. You hardly ever see the Titans use that much time in the play clock. Here comes Udova with the pressure, and the pass is complete to Voss, but he will be short of the first down. Well, he blew our he blew our theory right there, didn't he? Because <laughs> he did a good job again of sliding in the pocket, showing that senior Moxie, and then hitting Voss. And if you're looking for a first down, I'm going to Voss right here. Whoever's covering Voss better be ready. I don't think they're pooch punting this one. They've got to go for it on fourth and one, and they're screaming at the officials to let them to go ahead and snap the ball while the St. Thomas defense is not ready. And Wera, I don't know if he got it. Wera may have been stopped. Yeah, that's a guy we have not mentioned much today. Today, Derek Vonami, you know, getting in there to sophomore, showing that track and field prowess. He's a discus thrower. Look at him inside right here. He's going to fight off that block and come around the edge along with Patera. So Patera, Dombic, yep. all those guys in there. The familiar names. Maybe that's the new Caruso crew. <laughs> they 
They certainly sound like a Caruso crew right there. Well, Coach Cerrone still having a conversation with the officials. You had a lot of players going in and off of the sidelines for St. Thomas, and he wanted for the Titans to be able to snap the ball and catch them when they weren't ready. Well, but instead, it'll be first and 10 for St. Thomas. Let's see if they take a shot now. They're in 11 personnel, three wide receivers, and one tight end. 22 seconds left and a wild first half here from St. Paul. O'Connell pressured as he throws and has Ferrazzo open along the sidelines. And the catch is made, now 15 seconds left. Neither one of these teams, Corey, has a great kicking team. So they've got to get a ton more yardage before they get in range. Well, if they give up another play like that, Wisconsin Oscars will find out about their kicker. Yeah, because, I mean, you can't give up that kind of play with 22 seconds left to go in the half. And I know they like to play a lot of quarters coverage and, and kind of mix up what they do with some of their safeties. But whatever they do right now, you'd want to prevent him throwing to the sideline. Ropner, the kicker for St. Thomas, has got a long of 42, but on the year, he's only one of five from beyond 30. So they've got a long way to go. Timeout. Timeout. Coach Caruso Timeout. wants to discuss strategy for these final 15 seconds. Again, he calls the offensive plays for St. Thomas. So at this point, do you have time for a short pass, or are you gonna you got to take a shot to the end zone? Well, I'm kind of on, on the same page with you about the kicker. Uh, I mean, you, you see what he's done, and, and don't forget, anytime a, play, a kicker has had a blocked kick, which happened last week, they actually picked it up. You're talking about Ferrazzo on an extra point. He actually scored on a two-pointer after the block. But I'm a little bit worried about how low it comes off his foot the deeper that kick is. And you don't want to give up a block in this kind of game right now, in this kind of situation uh, at this point in the half. So uh, I'm going to go down the field and attack a little bit more vertically. Twenty-eight to fourteen, Mary Harden Baylor over Mount Union in the other semifinal game. That is in the fourth quarter, the championship game at the Stang Bowl in Salem, Virginia. Mount Union, they've been to the championship game fifteen times and won it all ten times, trying to go back again. So now we're ready. Don't be surprised if we finally see Matt Mishavitz. Haven't seen him so far. He's their deep threat. 15 seconds on the clock. O'Connell looks to his left, and it is almost picked off. Did he get it? A great effort by Frank Martin. That would have been his second interception of the game. You might want to take another look at that one to see if he did get it, because important for them and give St. Thomas another shot. Let's see if he scoops this before it hits the ground. Well, the hit and the timing by Tim Filter. Little Tim Filter, 5'9", 180. He just seems to have such great timing, and he's always at the ball. And the coach talked about being able to let him see the football this year, how much that has helped him in terms of his defense, and we saw it right there. Eight seconds left, and it is second and 10. 21 to 17. St. Thomas all over. Oshkosh in the first quarter, but Corey second quarter the Titans have shown some moxie and uh, They have come back and really with their defensive unit have gone back in this one And I like that their defense no matter the score Never quits with what they do in terms of execution uh, And what I mean by that is they have a plan and even if it doesn't start out the way that they like for it to, they really try to just continue to hone up and make the corrections on the sidelines. And that's what we've seen today. We're under official review. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. It's playoffs, so they're taking another look at it. The intended target for O'Connell was actually number 85, Charlie Doddle, the freshman from Glenview, Illinois. Get a load of this, high school All-American water polo player. How about that? Yeah, I mean, he talked about his first cousin who actually swam in the Olympics with Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte on that gold medal winning relay team. So, not going to be swimming out here in these lakes today, 28 degrees or whatever it is, but, you know, maybe on a, a, a Hail Mary right now, uh, he becomes the anchor because he's got some size at 6'2". 
The ruling on the field has been confirmed. Second down, St. Thomas. All right, our replay official is Steve Newman. And I think he got that one right. So eight seconds for Coach Caruso. Up two scores. Now do you take a shot, or do you still have the time for two plays? Yeah, I'm starting to think about maybe just taking a shot here. Uh, you never know what can happen. Somebody gets tackled half over. Ball on the 44-yard line. And it is a fumble snap and fallen down on by the Tommies. Didn't see what happened on that one, but as Willie Schneider, the junior from St. Paul, whose uncle played here at St. Thomas, and he's the current general manager for the Seattle Seahawks. And that was on Curtis James. And yep. we've seen two high snaps from him today. And then that snap right there, you look at him and just, that was a great shot with, with our crew downstairs. Like he just kind of lays on the back of the ground after that. So I can't believe I just hit myself trying to snap it up. And a good football player has had an outstanding career here. But that play right there will not be on his highlight film. No. Coach Caruso has coached a couple Remington Award winners throughout his career as a head coach and as assistant coach. They had a two-time winner here at St. Thomas, Josh Ostru, graduated a couple years ago. And Coach Caruso, he was telling us he thinks that James is going to win it this year. They haven't announced it yet. Three years of think about being an All-American, certainly have a chance. <laughs> well, maybe these guys will take a dip in one of these lakes <laughs> or the river to wash off. This is the kind of folks you get out here in the Midwest. They're hardy. They're used to this cold weather. That's like the old Vikings fans back in the day right there. Five seconds to go, third and 12 in this wild and wacky first half. Now you got to look to the end zone. O'Connell. Heaves it into the air, and it is caught, and isn't it a touchdown? What is the ruling? Charlie Doddle has the ball. Where did he land? They are going to review this. How appropriate. What a way to end this first half. Well, it was something we mentioned, Peter. His ability in that size at 6'2", 197 pounds. This is nothing more than really O'Connell showing tremendous athleticism. And you watch him that will go up over everybody. And I think maybe his left elbow hit down right before he got What a, what a job by him high-pointing that. Watch his left elbow right there. Well... Replay is going to take a look at this, but from that angle, it looked like he was down before getting into the end zone. Battle at 6-2 and some good hops as well. You had Blaschka back there for the Titans along with Wettengill. Those guys are both six foot tall. I was wondering if that was, you know, somebody making a catch over Tim Filter. After review, <laughs> the play on the field is confirmed. That is the end of the quarter. Two straight weeks for Dottle. Almost scoring. Almost scored last week as well. The half is over in St. Paul. 21-7. St. Thomas with the lead. The early fumble recovery. And then the touchdown to the tight end. What a great semifinal game we've got going on in Minnesota. Twenty-one to seven, our score at the half. St. Thomas on top of Wisconsin Oshkosh. And welcome back, everybody, to Peter Young along with Corey Chavis. Corey again for the fourth playoff game in a row for the Titans. They start off very poorly, down big in the first quarter. And it happens because of mishaps with ball handling. A lot of times you see this within their offense, players having to catch pitches, maybe the screen passes. We even saw a kickoff return bobbled. Can't have that in a championship-type game. We thought Chinny OG would be the story defensively for St. Thomas, and for the Titans it would be Nate Wera, their quarterback. But really, for the Titans, it was their defense in the second quarter that got him back in this. Really it was, and, and their defenders, we talk about Caruso's crew, our crew down in the truck showing us those shots. A lot of players, Dombic being a name, Riley Dombic, he's made some plays in the first half. We've also talked about Ayo Idowu, who's also been somebody who's been a force, and we wanted to see more energy from him, or at least the coaches did, and those things have shown up. 
Well, it was the St. Thomas defense that came up with the big plays in the first half. The first play from scrimmage, Myra muffs the pitch, and it is Idowu who gets the fumble recovery for a touchdown. First play of the game, and then a few minutes later, Kyle Coyne with the blocked punt, and it is picked up by St. Thomas. That led to another quick score as O'Connell throws back to his tight end marks, and just like that, it was 14-0. And then Wera and Oshkosh, they answer. Second quarter, the long pass to Whipperford. Kind of a blown coverage for St. Thomas. That made it 21 to seven. And that's where we stand at the half. Now stats that matter. You see the number of plays, 45 for St. Thomas, and then the four turnovers. That's huge. Yeah, because you talked about it. Earlier in the game, you talked about it, Peter. Plus 18 turnover margin or whatever it was for Wisconsin Oshkosh and to come into this game and have two in the first half totally uncharacteristic and then on third downs you have to sustain drives against the St. Thomas team feeling the energy of this home crowd. Only five rushing yards for Oshkosh Wisconsin is a good thing where is playing well he's got 145 yards in the air 10 for 15 O'Connell 10 for 16 he's got a touchdown but he has thrown two costly interceptions. And that's what I wanted to kind of go into because there's a lot that's on his shoulders as a younger player. And I think sometimes he can get a little bit overhyped. And, and I think you'll see that uh, this second half, maybe they go to the running game a little bit more to settle him back down. Because I thought late in that first half, he got too comfortable and allowed Wisconsin's Oscar's defense uh, to get back in. And then on the other side, Wera really played pretty consistently most of the half. Well, Wera in the first half, that broken pinky on his thrown in didn't seem to bother him too much. There was one deep throw that uh, didn't have a whole lot of zip on it. And O'Connell going to have to try and have that short memory that quarterbacks need, try and forget those two interceptions. It will be Tommy Football to start the third quarter as they won the toss but elected to defer. So we got Johnny Football. Johnny We've got Tommy football. I like the Tommy football even better. Well, and you've got the Marx brothers as well for St. Thomas, Luke and Logan. Nothing funny about that. And a nice return for the Tommies. And then Schneider, Willie Schneider, who takes it out to the 35-yard line. St. Thomas, Corey, they've had pretty good field position to start most of their drives this game. They really have, and that's a, a testament to the energy in which they approach the special teams portion of the game. Now, during the season, they really haven't been very productive because they've lost a couple of their better return guys, and that's something that I talked about with Coach Walsh just yesterday, but they've been efficient when it comes to at least getting the football and getting positive yardage on those returns. First and 10 on the 35. Hand off to Braddock on first down and off the left tackle. A short gain and tackle made by Wettengill. He's had a nice game so far here. St. Thomas located right in the heart of St. Paul, just a couple hundred yards from the Mississippi River. Founded in 1885. He's got a good enrollment. Famous alumni, John Schneider and Ron Fowler. And they've had some alumni, Corey, that have donated a lot of money to the brand new building surrounding O'Shaughnessy Stadium, 52 million for the athletic complex, 66 million for the student center. Second and eight, O'Connor will keep it on the ground and he takes a shot. Stefaniak with the hit. Andrew Thompson also got in there on that play. No play. Brings up a third and long. I've been impressed. For St. Thomas. I've been impressed today with Stefani. Uh, just his overall energy and what he's brought to the table. And they use him in a number of facets. Coach Cerrone calls him a playmaker. Wisconsin Oshkosh defense needs to come up with a play here. Remember, they're only down two scores as badly as they played at times in the first half. O'Connell. Plenty of time, and that pass is tipped nearly intercepted. Goodman got a hand on it. He looks like he might still be a little rattled. 
A little bit rattled, I think Goodman Goodman uh, has been very effective. Look at him read the eyes of the quarterback and get his hands up. Earlier in the first half, you saw him actually match a play against Logan Marks to break up a pass. So we go into the game, we mentioned Taylor Goodman, and everything about his play has been good thus far. The intensity of Caruso on display, and Brenton Braddock was the one that was on the receiving end of it. Fourth and seven. A great chance for the Titans to pick up an early score and a nice punt by Garrett Maloney all the way back at the 10-yard line and a short return for Kushabuski. So Garrett Maloney, the punter for St. Thomas, six foot six. He's a big guy, good athlete. Played on the basketball team here at St. Thomas. One of the few players on this football team that got some interest from some Division I schools, uh, and that's one of the reasons why he's been, uh, they've been so happy to have him here in the fold. And talked about his hang times. Normally in that 3-9 to 4-1 range, I wouldn't be surprised if that one was around 4-3 or 4-4. We saw the start for Wera, and then how he did after that start. Well, the same story for the entire team. Fakes the handoff. This is the pitch to Kushabuski out to the 25-yard line and is knocked out of bounds. Tyler Erstad. Very definitive player when it comes to seeing action in front of him. And that's one of the few times we've really seen the triple option today thus far. Rarely will we see the Titans in the same situation, in the same uh, setup, two plays in a row. Guerra keeps it out past the 25 yard line. Well, my thought is when you watch their offense, when I studied them on tape, I thought Matt Blackwell, their slot back, the super back, was the way to identify some runs. But when they're in this formation, two tight ends and one running back, kind of difficult to see. And we've got a flag down. And they're all pointing at Matt Blackwell. Number 89 on the offense. Five yards, third down. Maybe they agree with me. He got <laughs> caught. Yep. Blackwell, the junior out of Sussex, 6'2", 225-pounder. First penalty of the day. Third and nine. Now, this is a pivotal play for the Titan offense. Last thing they want to do is have a three and out. Guerra looking. Nobody open. Finally finds an open receiver. Caleb Boss wide open at midfield. Breaks the tackle and finally dragged down at the 40-yard line by Sean Hamlin. How does the best receiver get that open? Well, I think it comes back to the senior leadership of your quarterback because what he did was buy time in the pocket. He climbed in the pocket, something you don't see a lot from uh, college quarterbacks and did it very efficiently. First and ten inside St. Thomas territory. Dombeck with the pressure and a one-handed grab by Blackwell. So he's making up for that penalty. Beautiful catch. Not a ball production from him during the year, but you see some great ball production on this play. Snags it effortlessly. Hamlin with the tackle. Another first down. On the 30-yard line, some life in the Titan offense. The two offensive coordinators sending in the play, Luke Venning and Craig Smith. And yes, that's correct. you got two offensive coordinators that somehow put their egos aside and share the play calling. Here comes pressure. Screen pass. Flag down. Myra taken out of bounds by Patera. This one might come back. Holding. Number 60 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, first down. Ben Stralo, the center, all conference for the Titans, and he gets flagged. So two penalties on this drive. You see it with a pretty efficient pitch right there. He gets on right there, that left arm. He gets it on Vanami and pulls him down. You're going to get the call when you do that. Now first and 20, they're back to the 40. Guerra with a little pivot. Carlson chasing, throws to the sideline, and it is out of bounds intended for Voss. A player who's pretty efficient along the chalk. What I like to call it, when you're able to keep those feet in bounds and 
maintain your dexterity, your body dexterity, to make the catch. Voss very underrated in that aspect. Surprised he wasn't able to connect that time with Wera. Second and 20, third quarter. 11.09 left. Pass out in the flat to Myra, and Myra is going to get some of that back, but it's going to set up a third and long. Tremaine Williams in on the tackle, and how about Riley Dombeck moving his big body down the field, getting in on that tackle. He's a motor player, and it runs high and deep. He won't stop until those zeros on the scoreboard at the end of the game. Third and 14, they snap it quickly. They pick up the pressure. Now where it's going to roll. He's got plenty of time directing traffic, and he heaves it into the end zone, and it is picked up in the end zone. Another interception, and Tyler Erstad, the senior who does all the little things, just did a big thing. <laughs> Look at these fans. This stadium was built in 1948, and they better be careful because they're just going to knock this building down. <laughs> a big play as Wero was going for six. Instead, it's a pick. Remains 21 to 7 with 10:34 left. Nate Wero, I bet you he's thinking he'd like that one back. Here's another look at that last interception. You see him move to his right. He's pointing, directing traffic, trying to get away from some defenders. Thinks he has something right there developing. And really, he was looking for Kuchibowski and, 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 and uh, Kuchibowski, excuse me. And I think when you look at Erstad, you see that we got the great shot of him on the sidelines. Does it in the playoffs. We'll get to it in a moment. Three turnovers for the Titans and two for St. Thomas. Two picks by O'Connell as Braddock vaults over a defender and knocked out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. I want to get back to Erstad for a moment because he's been a player who's made plays in playoff games before. That was a huge play to stop a touchdown. He also returned a blocked punt 22 yards for a touchdown in 2009, way back then against Monmouth in a playoff win. So when it comes to the playoffs, Erstad, he's money. Second and three for the Tommies. The pitch to Braddock with a nice adjustment, great cutback, and a long game. Dragged down by Austin Blaschka. Good blocking up front by the Tommies' offensive line. Well, again, it's really a zone blocking scheme where he actually, they want to get the defense believing he's going to the right off the pitch. It's a design cutback. Anytime you mentioned it, you said it, vision. And you've seen that already today from both he and his backup, Jack Kaiser. The Marks brothers, Logan, the senior, the tight end, and Luke Marks, the younger brother, number 64 at tackle. Did a nice job opening up some holes here in the third quarter. First and 10. Tommy's on the move. O'Connell will keep it, and he is hit in the backfield, initially hit by Bo Steffens. Tackle by there you see Braddock on the year, over 1,000 yards coming in into yard today. Yard yards a game and then his touchdowns, first in the conference. Go. And the as good as those numbers are, Corey, he Thomas. missed the first three games due to injury. They're careful when talking about him because they believe, I believe, that he could be a be much better player in the future. Only a redshirt freshman. O'Connell making sure everybody's on the same page as the play is changed at the line of scrimmage. Second and nine. The pump fake, the screen. Pass is complete to Marks, and Marks is tackled at the ankles before midfield. Tackle made by Smith. Tackle by Alex Smith. Is dead. Tom played at Gustavus. We've already talked about his brother. They, when you have an athlete like him at 6'5", 248 pounds, rare size at this level, they'll use him down the field and also on plays like that, that middle wide screen just to get him with the ball in his hands. Third and three, both tight ends, Marks and Allen switch sides. And they roll to that side, and the pass is complete to Marks. Knocked out of bounds, but not before he gets the first down. Knocked out by Frank Martin. Knocked out of bounds. The senior from Mendota Heights. His younger brother, Luke, initially went to South Dakota State and then 
transfer. And he has been a nice target today for O'Connell. And they normally have him with his hand in the ground, yet still used in a number or a plethora of ways within their attack in the passing game. Pretty good blocker, though. Looks like we got a reverse. And another flea flicker to O'Connell. O'Connell breaks the tackle. Now he throws back a cross field to Ferrazzo. And that could be close to a first down. What a wild, wild play. Tim Filter there with the tackle. All kinds of stuff going on. It's almost like they're taking a page out of the Titan playbook. <laughs> Flag down, so we're going to have to sort this out. That was a very dangerous pass, by the way, mm. but we'll get into that in a minute. Especially going Personal towards Tim Filter. Foul on the defense. Get out of bounds. That's 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. That is a huge penalty for Coach Cerrone and the Titans. Let's take another look. Well, they toss it over to Braddock. He actually pitches it back. And then you'll see that the Ferrazzo gets it back to O'Connell. O'Connell on his way out of bounds. Yep. Like a no-look pass almost. And give credit to Brandon Jackson, the defensive tackle. 330 pounds for Wisconsin Oshkosh getting all the way out there to make that tackle. Penalty was on the hit out of bounds on O'Connell. That might have been Nathan Smith or Alex. I thought I saw a number 90 or 91. I couldn't see exactly. Regardless, it is a first down and a huge hit. That time by Nails. What a great football name, Jared Nails. Boy, he nailed him on that play, and he nailed him with some ferocity. Look at him come in right here. They're pulling 66 flesh. He says, no way. I read it again. You're not going to pull the guard and not involve me. Or I'll nail him. As you mentioned, good hit. Coming into today with seven tackles for a loss on the season, along with a sack. St. Thomas in the red zone today, two for two with two scores. Again, keep your eye on the tight ends, Allen and Marks. Allen, six touchdown passes on the season for them from inside the red zone. O'Connell stays on the ground, breaks the tackle, and goes out of bounds inside the 10. This young quarterback in a semi-final championship game is showing some boys. Well, Braddock, he's out blocking. You talked about Marks, and then he's and ice skating. It's snowy play. weather, and he's slick Third with the footwork go on his way out of bounds. O'Connell getting it done. <laughs> Kudos to Coach Caruso as well. There were some points during this game that O'Connell was a little shaky, but he comes out looking pretty good here on this long, sustained drive in the third quarter. It is third and two. Braddock gets the first down. Tackle again by Nails. Big number 73, Ulysse Payne the third. He's an interesting story. Lineman for St. Thomas. His father played basketball at Marquette from Al McGuire back in 77 when they won the national title. Went on to a successful career as a lawyer. We're talking about Ulysse Payne, his dad. And then he was the uh, CEO for the Milwaukee Brewers. First and 10 for St. Thomas inside the 10. That is Allen in motion. McConnell will keep it. And O'Connell into the end zone for his second rushing touchdown of the day. He's thrown for one and run for two. You got Snyder in the game, Braddock, both of those guys leading out in front. You also see Marks out in front, Kelly out there. A lot of players, excuse me, Matt Allen out there. A lot of players getting it done on the perimeter in terms of blocking to open that up for O'Connell. Ropner on for the extra point, and he has been perfect on the afternoon. 28 to 7, 541 to play. Matt O'Connell and the St. Thomas offense. Puts them up by 21. Play drive for St. Thomas, and they get the score on the O'Connell touchdown run. They're up 28 to 7. 
The Titans to receive Kushabuski at the six yard line, down 21 points, and he runs out of bounds at about the 25 yard line. 536 left to play in the third quarter. Can the Titans mount a comeback? Nice shot of the Cathedral of St. Paul under the lights, and we are under the lights here at O'Shaughnessy Stadium, and it has been all St. Thomas. 28-7 is our score. 536 left in the third quarter. Peter Young along with Corey Chavis. It is Titan football. And after that last interception, St. Thomas goes down and scores. And so now Wera and Myra and the rest of the Oshkosh seniors, well, their career is winding down unless they can get some quick scores. First and 10 on that reception to Myra. So they move the chains and immediately Wera under center. Handoff right up the middle. Tackle there by Patera. Wisconsin Oshkosh has been called a sleeping giant. Founded in 1871, 14,000 enrollment. Jim Ganter and Marty Bello, some famous alumni for the Titans. Their assistant head coach, John O'Grady, coached for years at River Falls, he called them a sleeping giant. And this year they have come out with the best season in school history as Voss makes the catch. Prior to this year, Corey, it's amazing. They've been playing football at Wisconsin Oshkosh for 118 years. Prior to this year, the most wins they ever had was eight. This year they've got 13. First and 10 on the 45. Guerra steps up. He's going to run with it. And it takes a shot as he is brought down. I believe that was Velasano who just lays into it. And look at that hair. That's a statement hit right there. It really is. Second and two. He still managed to get eight yards. The Titans on the march. Pass wide open. That is Whipperfirth who caught the touchdown pass in the first half. Those two have combined for a nice afternoon, and that moves the chains. So you now get a good look, Corey, at the speed and also a sense of urgency for Wisconsin Oshkosh. Now Whipperfirth in motion. They hand off to Myra, and Myra breaks a tackle or two. Patera. And Williams there finally drag him down, but not after until a gain of about seven or eight yards. They've got the pace up. This is what they did last weekend. They were down 24 to six and made a miraculous comeback. They never panic as an offensive unit. That was all in the fourth quarter. It's second and one. 340 to play, third quarter. Guerra to throw. Has a man. That is Voss. A stiff arm and gets inside the 15. Williams there with the tackle. You have to be prepared for him on that hedge route. And when you look at what he does here, very similar to the spin move he used last weekend to get away from traffic and go down that left sideline for the game-winning touchdown in overtime. Hamlin stiffed arm. First and ten. The handoff straight up the middle. Myra taken down just before the ten-yard line. What makes this offense difficult to defend? You have two players when you talk about Whipperforth and also Kushabuski who can play the wingback positions. Both of those guys will be aligned behind the tackles and wing positions. One of those guys after the triple option will get that pitch on the exterior. Now you see actually Kushabuski in the really in a slot position and also Whipperforth outside. Very first. Second and seven, under three to play, third quarter. Guerra gets pressure. Nimble feet and is brought down from behind, still trying to stay on his feet, but the sack by Derek Vonamy. Sophomore from Apple Valley, Minnesota. Third and 12, and the Titans get right back to the line of scrimmage. Impact Vonamy's made today, a transfer from Northern State, so but he's very good at controlling the center and getting off with his hands late in downs. You saw it right there. 
And now the crowd picking up the energy. Big third, th third down. Jake Dostal at number 33. He's got six touchdowns on the air. Checks in right behind where he's there to block. Where up. And it is almost intercepted. Throw right at Velasano. And he doesn't hold on. Still great defense by St. Thomas. And hold on. We got a flag down. It might be a personal foul right on that play. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 44 on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. That's Io Adowu, so a huge break for the Titans. The drive stays alive. Huge is an understatement. That was a very big mental lapse, concentration lapse, whatever you want to call it. I think those are the types of plays that not only give this team a second shot or bolt of energy, it can almost serve as a five-hour energy drink for them that they can pick it up here and score. First and goal. Remember, Caleb Voss is a big target. They throw to him into the corner, and the pass is high. Where is pass intended for Voss incomplete? Now second and goal with exactly second two left in throws. the third. For Wisconsin Oshkosh, they are used to coming from behind. They've trailed all four playoff games. The previous three, they came back 76 to three in the second half is what they've been doing prior to today. Dostalek again in motion. Guerra is gonna keep it. A little nifty move, and he is stopped right at the one yard line. Second effort, does he get in? No signal yet. Guerra on the keeper. Chini Ochi in there, and Paul Carlson also. Great second effort from Wera. Great second effort, and you saw it. He made Valasano miss in the hole. And look at him drop his head against Chini Ochi, the player we spotlighted in the open, and he still doesn't go down. And he's yeah. trying to kick. Did you see that? He's on the ground kicking. I guess that's what you do when you're only 180 pounds. Now they're going to review that. Well, right now the ruling on the field is it's third and goal from about a half yard out. The clock stops with 124 to play. One of the things that, Peter, we talked about with the coaching staff during the week, uh, it, where a story. And, and so many of his players, that, as you mentioned, his, his brother played here at the school at Oscars, Justin, good wide receiver he's helped actually Caleb Voss in his development working with him quite a bit uh, while he was there Nick was a quarterback at Oscars and, and he brings out the most in his teammates and that's the reason why this team can make these miraculous comebacks because when you have a senior who's got tradition at the school in terms of his last After name further review the play stands as called third down half the distance from the half yard line. All right, so it's third down. Corey, we're in four down territory, right? We are, and, and it goes to what we were just talking about. Where being the leader, don't be surprised if he keeps the ball or it's off tackle in his wishbone formation. 14th play of the drive, and it might have been a busted play, but where it gets him anyway, touchdown. Second touchdown of the game for the Titans. You probably ask, well, why did I say he would keep it? He kept it last week when, when they were in that situation and he scored. When the game is on the line, beware of Wera. 118 left in the third quarter. The Titans answer the score of St. Thomas. The extra point is barely in it just nicks the goal post and we've got a number of penalty markers on the field we've got to get this extra point thing figured out well i want to continue with your thought about the wera family there has been a wera on the titan football roster since 2001 Personal foul, number 97 on the defense, leaping and landing on another player. The points are good. The play, 
the penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Penalty on Riley Dombeck, so that is two mental mistakes for Coach Caruso's defense, and it is a 28-14 ball game. We have a final in our other semi-final matchup, and surprise, surprise, Mount Union, 48-35. They come from behind, and they are headed once again to the Stag Bowl to be played in Salem, Virginia. And NCAA Division III football championship Friday at 7 p.m. presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car right here on ESPN. And so for the 12th time in 13 years, now Union in the championship game. And again, the Bears repeating, neither one of these teams, Corey, have ever been to the finals. Never been to the finals, and if you go into the finals or if you want to go into the finals, you can't make mistakes like this. All of a sudden now you're kicking from the 50, you're going to have to go 75 yards. Mental mistakes will beat you in games that are not over, and this one is far from finished. Nate Ray boots it all the way through the end zone. And so for the Titans, they respond. It's still a two-score ball game, and this is a team that excels from coming from behind. And it is those leaders, the senior leaders, that now have to step it up on the defensive end. And I want to touch on that one more time, Corey. The where a story involves actually Coach Caruso because as an assistant, I believe he was at North Dakota, he was recruiting Nate's older brother, Nick, and remembers going to the Wera family, and Nate wears like a little nine or 10-year-old kid playing in the living room. <laughs> you gotta love that. It's awesome. Uh, also, when he was recounting the story, uh, just the energy he had. First and 10, the ball's on the 25-yard line. O'Connell and the Tommy offense on the field. The fake to Braddock and a great defensive play. The ball is loose. Was he down or not? It was initially Stefaniak who got into the backfield, and that is a turnover. What a huge play for the Titans. Apropos what we've been talking about all afternoon, they won't stop. And here's a look at the replay. Again, misdirection. O'Connell keeps it. We talked about mistakes with him. And that's just simply a, a bad handle by him. And out of nowhere, I think that was Smith who may have gotten in on the recovery. I'm not sure. Well, Nick Jolin had a chance at it. And I think, well, I still can't see who that number is. Great camera work by our crew. Again. I don't think they need to review that. That was clearly a fumble. And for O'Connell, it's been kind of a lot of highs and lows. Now his third turnover of the game. The momentum shifts in this game have been remarkable. And a big hit on Myra. Wow, hit delivered by Ryan Dietz. Remember, we called his name a lot in the first half. Well, we're calling it again on that three-step read and break. You, you, you want to be a senior, and after missing the 2011 season, coming back this year with so much consistency, what a job he did last week. He's carried that over into this game. Second and ten. Titans get right to the line of scrimmage. 106 left, third quarter. Cross in motion, triple option. They give it to Myra, and it'll be a short gain on second down. And again, gets stood up in a pile. So it will bring up Corey a third and long. I'll ask the question again. Four down territory? Well, I think right now, if you think about what they've done in terms of being able to be productive, on this side in the red zone, getting close to the red zone, maybe so. But we'll see what happens out of this personnel group that they're in now. Could be another pass or a triple option. Third and nine. Wera to throw over the middle, high, and a leaping catch by Voss. Wera's pass is complete to Voss. Well, you get your chance to see, because after that great catch by Voss, which that you don't want to describe that any other way and also clutch now it's fourth and two and they're going they're hurrying up Gonna try and get this play off before the end of the quarter it is fourth and two pass is incomplete intended for Kushabuski and a huge defensive stop for the Tommies 
Well, I don't even know if it's a stop. It's just an execution. And that's a, really, I, I wanted to put that on Kuchibuski at first. But when I looked at it, one thing that you we haven't noticed, and maybe our, our, our guys downstairs can get us to look at it. One thing that we haven't talked about with Ware, he does not put his hands on the laces of the ball when he throws it. And when you already have an injury with that right pinky, maybe we'll get a shot at it later on. That may have been one of the reasons why that ball floated uh, on that hitch route. Seven seconds left in the third quarter. Kashibuski, he was open, but it is first and ten for St. Thomas. And that may have been a bit of a busted play as O'Connell kind of double clutches as he pitches it to Braddock for a short gain. And that will do it for the third quarter. Wild first half, a wild third quarter. We've had two scores in the second half. O'Connell with the rushing touchdown. And then the Titans would respond with theirs. Wera with the score. Twenty-eight to fourteen is our score. It has been a wild one. Both teams trading punches in this one. It has been an entertaining game to watch and to call. What is at stake? And it is a trip to the national championship game to face Mount Union, who has already advanced earlier today and so now we start the fourth quarter and it is St. Thomas football and Corey you get the feeling like all game long St. Thomas has been on the verge of blowing out Wisconsin Oshkosh but the Titans just won't go away yeah and I think one of the reasons why they won't go away is just kind of their mentality and and and, and that mentality extends from the coach uh, when you think about how poised they've been that coach in terms of his leadership but it also extends down to the quarterback as a senior in they were and turnovers have been a huge part of this one coming into today the Titans had a turnover advantage of plus 18 on the year and Matt O'Connell has struggled a bit, thrown a couple picks, and he's had a fumble. And those plays were critical in this team being able to come back and, and get into the game. Uh, and, and I think for him, they're going to probably have him, you would think, restrict some of those throwing opportunities, maybe in control the clock. But they came out on this drive on first down, and they threw the ball again. Second and 18. They're back to the 10-yard line. Clock running as Braddock moves. Ferrazzo split out to the left. O'Connell from almost into his end zone and almost another pick. In and out of the hands of Matt Mashevitz. We haven't called his name much today. The six foot three freshman from New Berlin, Wisconsin, has played well in the playoffs, but he almost turns it over because that was on him. Man, that had nothing to do with O'Connell or accuracy or anything there uh, other than just a flat drop. And it was a pretty accurate pass on the skinny post away from the trip side to one of their faster receivers. Zach Wettengel almost had the interception for Wisconsin Oshkosh. That would have been their third of the game. It is a third and 18. They fake the handoff, and O'Connell is looking for somebody manages to avoid two Titan tacklers and will get knocked out of bounds. That could have been a disastrous play for the Tommies. Bo Steffens with the tackle, but O'Connell showing some nice footwork. And he has all day. Uh, we've pointed a track star even back in high school. So wasn't just a, a smart player, valedictorian in high school and all that stuff, but uh, he was also a very uh, accomplished athlete in three sports at Clear Lake High School. He's taken that to the collegiate level, and you've seen it all afternoon. Yeah, grew up on a pig farm, small town, Clear Lake, Wisconsin, just over a 1,000 people. And so the Tommies will have to punt. And back to receive it. About the 40-yard line is Kushabuski, and he will let this one bounce. And it rolls to about the 40. And that is where the Titans will have it. 28 to 14, 13 and a half to play. The fans from Wisconsin who have made the drive. Finally, something to cheer about. Nice shot of the state capitol right here in St. Paul, not too far away from our hotel. 28 to 14, our score. 
13-34 left in the fourth quarter. Both teams coming in, Corey, undefeated, 13-0 on the season, and neither one has ever been to the championship game. At the end of this quarter, somebody's going, unless we go to overtime. Hand up straight ahead, and we got another loose ball. No signal yet. The Tommies have the ball. And they get the fumble. Dan Pandora, the senior from Bloomington, comes away from the pile with the ball. Well, they wanted nothing more than the triple option. And you see a key fumble by Myra. And guess what? He had a key fumble in the fourth quarter last week. I keep talking about stuff that happened last week because it's all the playoffs and the pressure is all the same. And again, anytime a player had problems, and it was actually on that same exchange a week ago, and it hurt this football team. Nothing hurts it more than an exchange right there in St. Thomas territory now for their offense. Four turnovers for the Titans. Two for St. Thomas. And so it is first and ten in a huge game on first down for Braddock. So now inside the 30, the ball is on the 29-yard line, first and 10. Clock will slowly start to become a factor for the Titans. They stay on the ground, and Braddock with another impressive run, brought down by Steffens at about the 20-yard line, along with Frank Martin. There was one thing impressive about that play, and it was Mr. Snyder, the fullback. They're running a toss right here. We're not going to get a chance to look at the replay. He actually laid out one of the linebackers for Wisconsin Oshkosh. What a block by Snyder, who's getting it done. Second and one. One of the best blocks I've seen, actually, in quite some time for a lead fullback. Wisconsin Oshkosh calls the timeout. Second and one. The Tommies knocking on the door, trying to extend their lead late in the fourth quarter. 28-14 in the fourth quarter, 12-52 left. Moments ago on the sideline, Coach Cerrone, also the defensive corner, really laying into his troops. I think what you're seeing right now with what he's saying, 39 sacks this year, 102 tackles for loss, 21 interceptions, nine forced fumbles. Adding on to what we've done today, more numbers, we need a play right here. This is a big moment for the defense, a second and one, and Braddock may have been stopped before he picked up the first down. Thompson on top of him, but the first hit was made by Goodman. The problem here, though, Peter, is that remember when we talked to Coach Caruso yesterday? They are going to now second and one. They could have been like a fourth and one for them. So now when you're in those situations, second and one, it opens up an opportunity to potentially go for it and make it a four-down situation. Could be tough for this Oshkosh defense. Third and one, the two big tight ends move over. This could be a bootleg. No, it's a pitch to Braddock, and he has the first down. Tackled by Martin. You can see some of the some of the pounders that he brings when he delivers the blow, but not before the first down. Well, again, it's Willie Snyder out leading. You also get the name. outstanding block, reach block by Luke Marks, or Logan Marks, excuse me. So a lot of players on that side with, with the toss having to maintain blocks. First and ten inside the red zone. The fake the screen and almost another pick as Martin had his hands on it it was intended for Marks one of the big problems with O'Connell for me coming into this game was decision making now right now he's cupped up that by that time by Stefaniak and makes an ill-advised throw really with Marks not even looking back at him that could have been a huge game breaker type interception and that's what coach Cerrone was on the sidelines asking for almost had it Marks has already had a pick today. O'Connell, he has accounted for all three turnovers for St. Thomas. Two interceptions and a fumble. It's second and ten. Braddock with the pitch and is tackled for a loss behind the 20. And there he is again, nailed with a big play. Where is the hammer at? Are you kidding me? You have, I mean, this kid is absolutely driving home a statement, a point, whatever you want. They want in the toss right now. You want to cut back again? Oh, cut back into that. You have, oh man. 
He's getting me excited up here. I mean, that's the way you play football in the fourth quarter for championship type game. Jared Nails from Iron Ridge, Wisconsin. He was bored to play football. Third and 13. McConnell is going to keep it on the ground. Nails is trying to track him down, and he will be stopped for a loss. We've got an injured Titan on the ground, and that may be Stefaniak. It is. And it's his right ankle. And when he came up that time, it got caught up in the field turf. And it got caught up. If you see it, as he comes up the force, maybe on a replay, man, that was tough. He grabbed for it right away. You'll see him come up here into the screen. Watch his right ankle right there get caught up as he's making that tackle. Now he forces it for Nails to come over the top and make the play. But those are the injuries where not only does it look like maybe a, a lower ankle injury, if it got caught too high, it could even be a high ankle sprain, which would ultimately probably keep him out of next week's game if they were to advance. Kind of like when you're watching a basketball game and they show you in the replay, a guy mm -hmm. rolls his ankle. And everybody's ever played the sport cringes when you see it. And you're hoping that's all it is, because sometimes you get those and it's maybe even a broken ankle. And we're hoping it's just an ankle sprain. Stefanica Jr. from Milwaukee. So it is fourth and 13, a big decision for St. Thomas. Do they go for it or do they kick? We'll find out when we come back. It's a festive atmosphere in downtown St. Paul, the ice rink temporary for the holidays, right next to the Excel Center. 28 to 14 is our score. We are in the fourth quarter. And you were ice skating out there last night. Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> Looking for a coffee, and now it turns into the ice skating. The decision really for St. Thomas is a simple one. If Grockner can make this 38-yarder, it is a three-score game. Only one for five from behind 30 yards on the season, and it is blocked for the second week in a row. Wisconsin Oshkosh comes up with a huge special teams play and blocks a field goal. And for the second week in a row, he gets one blocked. And last week, you had an opportunity for Farazzo. Put them up or score the 40th point in the game. And I think that time it might have been Frank Martin. I didn't get a chance to see if that was him who actually got his hands on it. You see the reaction from Coach Caruso? Fairly stoic. I guess you can be stoic when you're up two scores with 10.49 to go. Well, I wouldn't be. Because <laughs> the way this team can come back, and now they're in their wing T look. All different kind of looks from the Titans in this game. Wera to throw. Has time. Looks down the sideline. And intended for Kushabuski. Good defense. And there's OG. Second down, 10 yards to go. Guerra on the night, 18 for 30. He's got a touchdown and a pick for 252 yards. And the lights on here at O'Shaughnessy Stadium. The temperature dropping as well. Expecting some snow tonight. Second and 10. Nice delivery to Kushabuski. And I say that because did you see how high Dombek got in the air and where I had to throw over him? I, I did. And the, and the, the, the anticipation. You have to make that throw before he comes out of his break. And what accuracy that time by where I've been impressed with him in fourth quarters of games. Nothing different so far tonight. Third and two. Clock running at 10.22 to play in the game. Here comes the pressure. Dietz is picked up. Pass over the middle, tipped in the air, and it is incomplete. OG tried to run it down along with Patera. So now it is fourth and two, and it looks like the Titan cunning unit is coming on. Well, that was a mistake that time. What he had was he had basically Myra on a roll to the flats, wide open. It would have been a first down if he had just flipped it over to him. And he also had Voss on an out route. So he predetermined where he wanted to go with the ball, and inevitably the result didn't work out for them. The punting unit for the Titans this year, not all that great. Nate Becker averages about 35 per punt. And a nice move is up by Hamlet. Hamlin with the punt return, taken down at the 44-yard line. Special teams tackle made by John Krishak. 
he's been able to come back from mistakes. This was very similar again to a week ago after a muff. And look at the vision. He's a pretty good athlete. Runs in that 4-5, four, 4-6 four, range. Probably a 4-6 player. And, and, and that's good speed for this level. And, and I think he has good footwork. He got vertical on that return. Impressed with how he changed the ball from the right to the left arm to try and avoid the tackler and avoid coughing it up again. That's like you crossing somebody over at George Washington in your basketball days. Oh, boy, now we're digging deep in the pile. <laughs> First and 10 for the Tommies. And O'Connell keeps it, goes out to the 40-yard line, past the 40, and we've got a flag down and another Titan down as well. And that's not a good injury. Holding number 77 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, first down. Injury timeout. Yeah, and, and, and I don't see who that is. That's, that's, that's actually Alex Smith. And, and what happened there, it was a reach block that was attempted by actually Luke Marks. And at the end of that reach block, yeah, you, you'll see it right here. Look at him at the left end. Watch the end of this reach block. He's going to go to the ground right there and try to cut him. And, and right there, you see his right knee got caught in the ground. Number 91, I'm, excuse me, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't clarify that. Alex Smith is number 91 for them on the, their, their right defensive end on that play. And he's a good football player. Yeah, and remember, he was a medical redshirt last year due to injury. So this is a pretty good sign that he's walking off under his own power. Uh, it's been a tough game, actually, Corey, for Curtis James, the consensus All-American center for St. Thomas. He was the penalized player, and we'll call back to the first half where he muffed that uh, shotgun snap to O'Connell. Well, you know what? It's a reason why. They play a 3-4 scheme, which puts Nathan Smith, who actually is the brother of Alex, over top of him. And that, anytime you have a player who can play with leverage, a first-team all-conference player who bench presses 475 pounds, you have to be ready after the snap to play football. Now, is that a Johnny Manziel bench press <laughs> figure, or is that legitimate? No, that's legitimate. 475-pound okay. bench presser. Uh, and getting it done today in terms of being disruptive versus the inside run game. Now, they have had some problems with the perimeter run game of the time. 9.25 to play here in our semifinal matchup. Two undefeated teams, St. Thomas and Wisconsin Oshkosh, 13-0. Both teams trying to make their first trip ever to the championship game. O'Connell hands it off to Braddock who has gotten his share of carries in this game. He has been a busy running back. You kind of see what I'm talking about. Another one of those dives or inside plays. Again, uh, not bad defensively for them, even though they've been backed up here maybe three or four yards. Five, well, a little bit more on that one, but uh, they're doing a pretty decent job of, of thwarting that, the inside run. Second and 15 with 8.34 to play. So still trying to make up some ground after that penalty. We've got another penalty flag down. Ball start, number 75 on the offense. Five yards, second out. David Simmett, the backup tackle, freshman 6'7", 300 pounder from Stillwater. He has, Minnesota. he has some division one offers as well. Uh, a couple of players here, Coach talked about it. They can go out of out of 10 players that they compete against Division One. They'll get about one. Well, he's one of them. Yeah, true freshman, athletic for 6'7", north of 300 pounds. So now you're looking at second and 20. Play clock down to two. O'Connell gets it off. Schneider again with a wonderful block as O'Connell stays inbound. Smart play by the sophomore. That keeps the clock running. Still not time to panic, though, on the Titans side. Because if you think about what they've been able to do and how they won again last week, I think they have to be very patient. They're in a good position right here. They just cannot afford to give up a first down. Third and 15. Again, the play is changed. Matt Mashevitz, number 87. On the right side of your screen, Schneider moves to the other side of O'Connell. And a high snap, but O'Connell manages to catch it. And he loses the ball, but manages to get it back. Stripped by Thompson. And what a heady play by O'Connell. 
and that's Andrew Thompson has been all over the place. Uh, again, you'll see him over there on that right side. Look at him bend and get down low to make that stop. And it was a high snap also because of that play by Nathan Smith inside. But Andrew Thompson is a player that has tremendous ability for the Titans. Goodman for the Titans was the defender that nearly beat O'Connell to the ball. And so the Titan defense gets the stop they needed. It's fourth and 17, 640 to play. And they will punt. And Kushabuski is going to let this one roll. And it's about the 15 yard line. And so the Titans have got to go 85 yards for a score, and they can't take a lot of time off the clock. Well, you have to dish the wing tee. You don't want to see, I, in terms of my opinion, we'll prefer that some of those players that you often see, uh, Kushabowski, Buski, excuse me, in the backfield, those players now have to play in the slot positions for you. If Matt Blackwell's in the game, he may even have to split out. If they're going to go to that wing T type look, and it looks like they're doing it here on first down, I'd expect some perimeter screens uh, on the outside tomorrow. We're a running out of time, and he will be sacked down at the four yard line. Derek Bonamy with the sack. Bonamy's had a tremendous game. Yep, bringing the hammer. And he did, and he is fired up. You know, he's not even normally in there a lot of times on some of that third downs. In fact, he left the field now because it's an obvious passing situation for the Titans. And so he's off the field, and then they come in and bring in one of their stalwarts, Dajewski, to bring the heat. Second and 21 from his end zone, where with the complete pass and tripped up at the 10-yard line is Whipperfoot. Where was passes complete to John Connolly, who got out there on the stop. One of, another player we haven't talked about a lot. A tremendous interception last week. He adds to their versatility. A number of defensive backs who get action. You also see Moses Aquina be in there on the right side at the right corner. And now you got Chitty OG in the slot. Better be ready for some heat. Might be coming from OG. Third and 16. They show pressure. Keep your eye on number two. Drops back. Wera throws deep. Throws it up. An incomplete great defense by the St. Thomas secondary. Sean Hamlet and then Connolly, you just talked about him. Connolly number 12, the transfer from Indiana. He's talented. He even got a little bit of run there at Indiana as a walk-on back in 2010. And what he can do is he can backpedal, and he's got pretty good deep one-third pedal open and turn ability. And you saw it on that last play. Maybe their best player on film in the deep one-third middle of the field. Now Becker has to punt from his own end zone. And St. Thomas will have excellent field position. They let the ball bounce. And it takes a St. Thomas roll to right about midfield, about the 49-yard line. So with 4.54 to play, St. Thomas has got a chance to try and run out the clock and move on to the championship game for the first time in school history and take on Mount Union. Mount Union, they've won that thing 10 times. And so whoever moves on from our game, you want to talk about eyes wide open. They've never been there. <laughs> Right, they've never been there, but St. Thomas has been a steady progression for Glenn Caruso in this program, and I think as you've seen today, uh, they may just have a little bit better overall team than on the other side uh, for Coach Cerrone and his group. Marks and Allen switch sides. The pitch to Braddock. Good blocking. Plenty of room to run out past the 40-yard line and tripped up and brought down at about the 35. Oh, well, he gets on the perimeter, and, and again, John, I mean, you talk about Snyder. All afternoon, Willie Snyder has just been tremendous. I almost said his, his uncle's name there, but I, I think when you think about what he's been able to do today in the running game, Willie Snyder has been a big, as big a part of their success on the perimeter as anybody on that offensive line. Very effective day for him blocking out wide. 
Thompson, number nine, was in on pursuit, but it was really Tim Filter who knocked Braddock out of bounds. First and ten, Braddock again to about the 31-32 yard line. Jolin again in on the stop along with Steffens. For St. Thomas, since 2009, they were eliminated in the quarterfinals by Linfield. And then the last two years in the semifinals, they lost to Bethel and Wisconsin Whitewater. Wisconsin Whitewater this year didn't even make the playoffs. The three time defending national champions, they lost earlier this year to Coach Cerrone in a huge win for his program. He really was. And you think about the progression, we talked about progression semifinals semifinals well now finals potentially and that's kind of what i'm talking about about the growth and how they've made it happen braddock hit hard by mark at the 29 yard line stays in bounds so the clock becoming a huge factor for the titans just over three to play and in every sport you have to kind of have those times where you learn something along the way Third and four as Coach Cerrone has to call a timeout to stop it. Let's take a look back at the first play of the game of fumble. And it was run back in by Adowu. So with just a few seconds off the clock, it was 7-0. And then after a blocked punt, it is O'Connell to Marks. That made it 14 to nothing. And then in the third quarter, O'Connell with another touchdown run. He's scored twice on the ground. He's also thrown a touchdown pass for Wisconsin Oshkosh. It was the big throw from Wera to Whipperford. That was their first score of the game in the first half. And they were down 21 to seven at the half. And then Wera with a running score in the third quarter. That made it 28 to 14. And that is where we stand now with only 3.23 to play. Not a lot of time, but if you can get a stop here, then you put them again in a fourth down decision-making mode. And at that point, potentially maybe out of the range of their field goal kicker, who's had some problems here and there. He did, as you saw on the last kick, he had it blocked. So uh, big, big play right here. They fake the handoff. Thompson tries to track O'Connell down. And O'Connell is stopped at the 30-yard line. Mark meets him at the 30, and so it will bring up a fourth down. I'm not surprised by the play call. I think the one thing we've seen, we talked about perimeter runs, tosses, and, and even some power outside. Well, this time the bootleg game from the beginning of the game, even on that boot throwback that they had for a touchdown, has been a factor. Why? Because O'Connell's athletic. And again, they tried to test the athleticism on that play of Andrew Thompson, and it really didn't work. Only one timeout left for Wisconsin Oshkosh, so Coach Cerrone can't afford to blow it right now. So Coach Caruso already talking to the official. He's going to let play clock wind down to one second and then call timeout. There it is. So on fourth and five, they'll bring the field goal unit out and try and make it a three-score game. Their first is the half. Taking a look again at our past champions in Division Three, Wisconsin Whitewater, three straight. Before that, it was Mount Union, and then Wisconsin Whitewater. Those two teams, Corey, have faced each other in the finals seven straight years. And Mount Union now in the finals, 12 out of the last 13. Coach Caruso in his fifth season at St. Thomas. He's got an excellent record at 57 and seven. Two-time national coach of the year. He's an offensive guy. He's coached in South Dakota, North Dakota State, originally from back east. Played his college ball in upstate New York and uh, grew up in, in Connecticut. And he's about uh, two and a half minutes away. He's in there somewhere with the headset on talking to his players. He's about two and a half minutes from his first trip to the finals. That's has to be exciting. Uh, there's been a lot of energy associated with this football program associated with the growth and he's been he spearheaded that growth and the thing that i like most about is it seeing he was so confident yesterday when we spoke with them yep. about their plan and today even right here fourth down and four and they're not going to go kick a field goal they're going to potentially go for it you surprised and, well this could be the nail in the coffin let's see fourth and five ball on the 29 yard line o'connell has time throws and the pass is complete 
And it is a big catch for Matt Mashevich. You brought up his name a few minutes ago. And look at the smile on Coach Caruso's face. I, I was going to talk about, you know, the, the plans for the future as you see the completion. And look at this on Coach Caruso's face. That smile tells the story. What I wanted to get at to Corey was you don't spend $52 million on an athletic complex if your football team's not winning ballgames. Right, and, and, and the rest of those, some of the, our, our staff downstairs, they did a great job of pointing out the rest of the success of the athletic program yep. uh, during the time of the last five, six, seven, eight, nine years. And that lends itself to those anonymous donors. First and ten, under two to play. They're going to keep this ball in the hands of Braddock and perhaps maybe even Schneider as Braddock's got to be closing in on 100 yards for the day. He had nearly 100 last week, along with four touchdowns. The fans here at O'Shaughnessy Stadium have braved the cold weather, and now they are all on their feet. Well, Caruso's crew... They're still down there. They're not quite as fired up as they were earlier, but I'm sure they can find some more energy after the game, potentially. But uh, tremendous commitment from this program and these fans. 1-11 left, second and six. And Wisconsin Oshkosh only has one timeout left to stop the clock. A historic day for Coach Caruso and this St. Thomas football program. Third year in a row, they make it to the semifinals and they finally punch their ticket to the championship game. They will play in the Stag Bowl in Salem, Virginia. And on the other sideline for Coach Cerrone and the Titans, the, the thought that comes to my mind, Corey, is perhaps is almost too much success too quickly. I mean, St. Thomas has been building for a few years. Mm -hmm. This really kind of came out of nowhere for the Brian Titans. Perry. It did. And, and, and what I was talking about earlier when I said progressions, I think that this is the natural progression for a team that's going and lost in the semifinals a couple of times to make that next step to finals. Now they have another hurdle to climb in Mount Union, maybe the biggest hurdle in the history uh, of this of Division Three football. So you, you think about what both teams have accomplished. There's certainly stuff to build on. One team will be building on next week. Your final, 28 to 14. St. Thomas moves on to the championship game, and they will face Mountain Union, who has been to the championship game 16 times. They've won it 10 times. 12 of the last 13 years they're there so clearly Mountain Union has all the experience St. Thomas has never been there until now and what a great hard-fought game by both teams and entertaining to watch yeah it really was I think both teams came with so much energy I like the the way that Wisconsin Oshkosh fought back in the game a testament to Pat Cerrone and his staff uh, I think when you look at Mount Union next week, though, moving ahead for St. Thomas, uh, you got to be concerned in terms of their defensive presence because they're only giving up about 170 yards. You want to look at that Mary Harden Baylor tape and see what they did and how they were able to get up 28 to 14. Because I think this team has a good enough running game that if they can get a lead, maybe they can sustain as they did today because they too have a pretty solid defense. Yeah, Mountain Union on the year averaging 55 points a game and only giving up 6.8 points. So it has been another dominating year for that program. And Coach Caruso basking in the adulation and the applause from the St. Thomas faithful here at O'Shaughnessy Stadium. They improved to 14-0 for Corey Chavis. I'm Peter Young saying so long from St. Paul, Minnesota, where your final score is St. Thomas 28, Wisconsin Oshkosh 14. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watch ESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.